Hello and welcome. It's Melanie here with Benny Chill Studio. I'm so glad you dropped by. Are you willing to try a new technique? How about using an embossing folder and watercolor? Now this is with Distress Inks. So I, I don't know if you can consider it watercolor, but give it a try. It's a lot of fun. There's the two papers I'll be using, these cling stamps here, and the Distress Inks with a water brush. And I'm just using heavy weight cardstock. So let's get started. Here is an embossing folder. I don't know who the maker is. I don't have any background on that. I just have this wonderful embossing folder and I love it. Now this is the larger size embossing folder and you can see the size of my white mat. This is going to go on a five by seven inch card so my mat's a little bit smaller. And I'll use my big shot uh, die cutting machine and the extended platform on the embossing tab. All right, I've got my plates in a set ready to go, and I'm adding a little bitty shim on top just to give this a really deep embossed impression. You don't have to do this with the added shim. You can see it's curling up on me. That's fine. I just wanted a really deep impression here. And I've got embossed and debossed impressions on the front of my mat. Now I thought I would try this because I am going to be using a water brush and water tends to warp cardstock, you know, pretty much. But I didn't want to border around my paper so I used some double sided tape and I'm sticking this directly on my glass mat just to keep my paper taut. And you can see it's going to peel up very easily when I'm done. So I will start, this is the uh, Victorian Velvet and I've got peeled paint and I'm only using very minimal amounts on my glass mat. You don't need that much ink for this little embossed uh, image here. That's wild honey. Okay, you if you don't have a glass mat just use a, any other non-porous surface. I have some leftover tiles. Sometimes I use that. It works great for inks. So I'm just going to wet the wells this is actually a debossed part of the image on the flowers. And then I'll squirt out a little bit of water from my water brush and start picking up my ink. Now I, I want to start a little deeper towards the center. And then I'm just going to lay down the color on each one of these petals. So I go back and forth at trying to use very minimal amount of water on my paper. And you can dab off on your paper towel as you move along. So the key here is just to be patient. You're laying down your first layer of color. Now what happens with the Distress inks is they will dry back lighter, which is great. So you're going to add a lot of dimension here with just different layers of colors. So while that's drying, I'm going to move on to the next flower and I'm going to, you know, give you a little more close-up look on this. So again, just keeping the water where I want the color to go. Now it doesn't move on cardstock like it would on watercolor paper, but you can see it is moving fairly easily and I'm trying to stay within those white embossed lines or the debossed lines, the raised ones. And by working in layers, you can see I'm getting a very light color here off of that darker shading towards the center. After that dries, you can come back and add more layers and it will just give you more depth to, depth to each of your colors. Here I'm moving on to the leaves and some of that peeled paint. And again, going back and forth between the paint and then using my uh, paper towel there to dab off any colors. Now you see as I'm laying in the color, these look like they're all going to blend together. And remember, everything with watercolor to me goes through an ugly duckling stage. But then as you work in layers, letting each one dry in between adding color, you're going to add your own depth and shading and creating natural highlights. So just hang in there. Even if it goes through the ugly duckling stage, remember what comes after that, the beautiful swan. So. That's just a little tip not to give up even if it looks kind of murky or bad to begin with. And while each of those, the leaves are drying, the flowers are drying, I can go back now to my pink flowers and add just the centers. And that's with the wild honey. I get my base layer down and after that dries I'll come back and add a little more 
deeper color just along the bottoms to give it, you know, a 3D look. So I can touch this with my finger and see if it's dry enough to go back and start adding a little more color, a second layer here to my flowers. And this is what I do. I just go back and forth giving each one time to dry. If you need to go do laundry, start your dinner, pull some weeds out in the yard, do whatever you need to do. Just let it dry and then come back to add additional layers of color. It will be worth it, I promise you. So you'll see in my finished product when I go back to the leaves they're going to start being distinguishable from one another instead of looking like one green blob because of the natural shading and highlighting of just going back and adding deeper color after each layer is dried. Okay, this really does go together very quickly. The only time consuming part is actually letting the colors dry between layers. See how this goes together? Pretty easily. Now there are different types of water brushes. Some have really fine brushes you know on the end and this is like a medium one and it works okay you just use a little lighter hand I'll show you here as I go uh, move on to doing some of the stem work just use a very light hand and you can get really fine details with your water brush as well if you're more comfortable using a really uh, real watercolor brush go ahead and do that do whatever is most comfortable to you all right, now clean my brush off very quickly there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green and just start going in on these buds and also on the stems. And you see that very fine detail there at the end of the bud. If you just use a really light hand and just the tip of your brush, I'm not sure that you need all the different sizes of water brushes. Just try to lighten up your hand a little bit and see if that works for you with the brush that you have. Okay, you can see I went really light on those other two leaves. If I go back after they dry a little bit, I can add as much or as little concentration of color as I want on those leaves. Okay, I'm not going to take up this whole video by doing every flower, every stem every leaf. I'm just giving you an overview idea of how to do it and then you can take off and do this yourself. Don't be intimidated by it. It's really a fun process. And again use the embossed and debossed impressions however you see fit. So see there it's drying back a lot lighter that's just an overall view there and you can see the dimension from the embossing folder it's just a win-win all the way around okay I need something to go in that empty space on the front of my card so I'm going to use these clean stamps from Hampton Arts it's graphic 45 by Hampton Art and there are some beautiful little stamps and I'm going to be heat embossing this so this is an anti-static powder bag I'll use my Versamark embossing ink and then some, I thought the gold embossing powder would pull that golden color out of the center of my flowers. And I did like that combination. So I'm inking this several times so I get a good impression. Again, this is just on the same white cardstock that we used on the front of the card. And then I'll be adding my gold embossing powder and I am not sure what happened after that my footage showing the heat embossing tool was cut out so I apologize for that but um, you add your embossing powder I like to use a coffee filter to catch it and then I put that back into my jar and then I just simply heat emboss this until the powder is melted this is going to jump ahead because again I don't know what happened to my footage with my heat tool but you can see other videos that I've done that show you how that melts then I simply came over with a fancy edged oval from Spellbinders and cut out that sentiment for the front of my card okay I can peel this up again I use that uh, double-sided tape behind there but look how beautiful this dried 
And then I thought, okay, I could put that on my five by seven inch card, but wouldn't it be gorgeous just to cut around one edge to really give it some interest. So I'm just taking my cutter bee scissors and I'm quickly going to cut around those embossed edges just as close as I can. It doesn't have to be right up to the color. Just do the best you can. And remember I have double sided tape back here so sometimes cutting through both of that is kind of sticking to my scissors a little bit. But this goes really quickly as well with the fussy cutting. And then this is going to add a nice little detail to the front of our card. So there it is all cut out on one side and I'm ready to get that put on the front of my card. So again my card base is 5 by 7 and then I decided to use a green striped mat that is also 5 by 7 because this just didn't stand out as well as I thought it would against the white. So I want it to add a little bit of interest with a pattern that's not too busy and of course this is a tone on tone green that kind of picks up the greens that I used in my painting and I'm going to get that put on the front. I'm going to pop up this panel on foam tape just for a little added dimension and to get it away from that striped paper just a bit and it turns out that that was a pretty cool idea so I'll get that put on the best that I can, eyeballing this here, and that really makes our image pop off the front of the card. And then I used a little foam tape behind that oval with the gold embossing, and that will fill in that white empty space just perfectly. There we go. And that finishes off the front of our card. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Isn't that true? And what a sweet little saying. So I hope you will look through some of your embossing folders and see if there's anything that you could use to paint on. It is so much fun and it could turn out to be such a beautiful card. I decided to emboss my envelope using that same embossing folder that I used on the front of my card. I just make sure the flap is outside of the embossing folder and then I run that through my Sizzix Big Shot using the embossing um, tab. So this is a real easy way to tie your envelope to your card. See this? Same embossing folder that we used on our card. And then for the liner, I simply went with some white cardstock, not real heavy weight, just a little, and then a stripe to mimic the background on my card and to keep it very simple so it doesn't distract from the card itself with a busy liner. Just simply flip, uh, use that flap there with some tape runner and my lined envelope is done. And what a great coordinating piece to that card. We've got the stripes going on, we have the same embossing folder that shows from the front to the back, and that finishes our custom card and envelope. I am so glad you joined me today. I would love to hear any comments from you, get a like from you, I would love to have you as a subscriber so you can come back and visit me next week. Have fun everyone and happy crafting!